Today's Bobcast is brought to you by the Bobcat Sports Network and FrostburgSports.com, your number one source for all Frostburg State athletics. And we are talking today with Coach Haley Ware. Coach, women's lacrosse 0-2 this past week, but arguably the hard, hardest part of the schedule is complete. What did you learn from these games? I think that we really learned to be flexible and create new goals for us as we move along to get to where we're trying to go that will be something that's successful for us. Um, there's a lot of challenges that we face this week, and I think we kind of went with the flow and did what we had to do, and I think that I'm very proud of how they played in both games, even though the results didn't turn out how we wanted them to. In the midweek matchup against number eight team in the nation, York, we saw high spirits on the sideline after the conclusion. You mentioned uh, your team set some goals and, and achieved them. Uh, how important is it for, for morale to be in good standing this late in the season? I think it's very important. Um, we talk a lot about that this is the hardest part of our season and some of the toughest teams that we'll play. I mean, York is phenomenal. And so to be able to be in good spirits against them and have these small goals that we've completed, I think that's really important moving forward because the schedule's not getting any easier. Um, we still have St. Mary's and Mary Wash, and those are two really extremely tough teams. So I think to be able to stay up and in high spirits the whole time, I think, is really going to help us move forward. And then we always try to build off of that to go into the following year after that as well. So I think um, as we move forward these next couple games, we'll keep doing that with the smaller goals and try to keep accomplishing what we can accomplish. In the matchup with the Spartans, Morgan Cavey scored five times. She's been the team captain uh, this season. How has she developed through her time here at Frostburg State? Morgan is just a great athlete. I mean, she really has a drive and she has goals for herself and she is committed to them and making them work. Um, she's one of our extremely decorated player. She's been in the record book now for a ton of things for Frostburg and she just keeps climbing. So this week she hit her 200th point and I think that is just huge for her to be in seventh place on the record book for that. And so she just keeps kind of surprising us every day and we kind of hold her to that standard and she knows it. Um, and she puts a lot of pressure on herself as well, but I think that she can do some of these things. And so we're excited to kind of have a couple more games to move her forward and get all of her that we can get these next couple because after that then we don't have her anymore, and we're really going to miss her on the attacking side of the field. Well, you got her sibling. You that is you true. Don't, you don't have that situation on every team. What's it like? Do you think that's played into her time here, having her sister on the team as well, a little bit of uh, – not necessarily simply rivalry, but they, they know each other and are familiar with each other's games Sometimes and tendencies. Sometimes they are a funny match. They butt heads a little bit um, in a good way, though. I think that they're very both competitive people, and I think that's why. Um, but if you see them going head to head, I have to sometimes say, like, you two separate and go against someone else because they'll play till someone really hurts the other one. And I think that goes back to when they were younger. But I really think that they both push each other a lot harder. And, I mean, for both of them to be so successful already with – um, Morgan with the goals and the points and then Summer with the draw controls already this year. I mean, I think that that's just something that eggs the other one on to keep trying to be as good as the other one in different roles, though. I think that's what's helpful is um, Summer's really a true midi and Morgan is really a true attacker, even though we both have them playing random positions here or there. But mm -hmm. they, I think that just doing well and wanting to be competitive has really helped the other one. So we're lucky to have both of them. Moving to the CNU matchup, you headed to Newport News, Virginia, and you're immediately down six goals. What was the message to the team after, you know, you're on the road and you get up that morning, you ride the bus, you go out there about what six hour trip and then you're facing a deficit that big that early. You know, what, what are you saying to the team? So we had an interesting morning that morning with um, our goalie, both goalies being out. And so to throw in a field player who has never played the position before or touched a stick or anything along those lines, mm -hmm. um, the goal was the, kind of the same thing, keep morale high and really just we have nothing to lose. I mean, right. go out there and do what we can. So to be up six to zero, we really pulled it in because they kept shooting in the same place and we just weren't sure if Teresa had noticed that because she's never played the position before. Before. Mm -hmm. So we call the timeout to talk about that. And she was just as eager as ever to say, can we not have a timeout? Can you just take more shots on me? Like she just wanted to learn. And so for that, I think it just riled the team up a little bit more to see how much she was trying in a position that not many people would step up to do. So I think that it was really just to make sure that we were still okay and that we were moving forward and that we still had some goals. And every time Teresa made a save that we should have put that in the back of the net because she was stepping up for us and we needed to step up for her. 
Stephanie King ended with three goals, and KV added two more. And are there some positives being derived from these tough losses? You, you alluded to it earlier, but you know now you've gone through the gauntlet, I guess, and uh, you can look back and think, okay, this is what we learned about our team. This is what we knew we need to work on. I think that the major thing that we took from this game was for Teresa to step up. That was just so selfless and so teamwork oriented that mm -hmm. it really just showed that that's what it's more about than anything. And so I think that was a huge accomplishment that it was just we said, Teresa, she said, OK. And the team was like, great, we're behind you and here we go. So I think that was what we really wanted to get out of that game was to just prove that we were a team and no matter what happens to us and good or bad, that we can still come out and play. And we I think that we did give them a game. I don't think that it was great all the time. I mean, the weather factored into that a lot and they played in it, too. But I think that we definitely took away some positive things we moved the ball very well on attack. They were in a zone, um, which we haven't played a ton against. So it was good to kind of get that movement. And from the first one with Chloe and Shelby, the first goal that both of them being freshmen and going out there and being confident with that, that was huge. Um, and then to just kind of keep moving, we had said that we are tired of having one half being a shutout. So the second half, they had set the goal at eight. So they had had four in the first half. So we said, okay, you have four more. And f to get that, again, that's just a small goal that we had set for ourselves. So I think that that was huge to keep that morale and really be on the same page and moving forward. And I think that there's a lot of small things that we can take away from each game. But This week you've got two games at home. Now, granted, there is an April snow going on outside, but it's supposed to warm up later this week against two CAC foes in Southern Virginia and St. Mary's. Uh, what do you want to see from the team, given that these uh, past few matchups, as we said earlier, have been tough? But what, what do you want to see the growth in these the Up same thing. I mean, I think we just want to go out there and do our best and see what we can come up with. I mean, we would love a win here and there. Um, but I think that at this point in the season, we're going to go out and give our best that we can. That's Saturday being senior day, I think is going to push a little bit further to kind of give back to Morgan and Abby for giving so much to the program. Mm -hmm. And I think that always kind of makes everybody a little bit more excited to play. So I'm hoping being at home, not having to travel, hopefully, like you said, the snow is gone. That's right. And we can really just have two good games that we feel confident about. Coach Haley Ware, thank you for joining us on the Bobcast today, and uh, good luck the rest of this week. Thank you. Another episode of the Bobcast here. It's episode number 30, and this one's presented by the Bobcat Sports Network. We're here with Coach Adeo Louie. Coach, we'll start with the Falcon Invitational at Messiah, where Bradley Forrester started things off with a bang, finishing well in his first few events. And my question to you is, is there such a thing as setting a tone in a track and field uh, invitational like, like the Falcon? Uh, that's a good question because a lot of people probably would think the answer to that is no, uh, but the answer is yes. <laughs> uh, you know, I think our, our indoor championships this year on the men's side would be a good example of that. And, and uh, you know, you asked that question in relation to uh, this meet, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and I'd say yes as, you know, as well. Uh, a lot of meets we go to uh, aren't scored, so, uh, you know, sometimes that – can get in a way of, of you know maybe motivating the team as a whole perhaps uh but this was scored so uh and it was updated uh, frequently so yeah. uh the team had a pretty good idea where we stood throughout the you know throughout the day on saturday there so uh, yeah it's, it's nice to see brad start off well uh and uh uh you know then we friday we had also when brad was finishing up we also had the men's discus throwers starting out uh, and uh, and they did a nice job, uh, even though the weather conditions weren't uh, the nicest there on Friday. Uh, and, and then Saturday, uh, you know, just started rolling, you know, and just kept rolling. And one of the advantages we have this year on the men's side is, is, is we've we've got some pretty good event coverage in different mm -hmm. areas. And uh, so we're uh, picking up points in a lot of different event areas, and, and uh, that's what it's all about, you know, in track and field. How do you balance – because track and field, it is a team – a sport obviously but it's it's very individualized and then you have your groups and how do you kind of balance that you know you see a runner like Forrester doing well early and how does it you know get that to trickle down into everyone else and, and, and keep it a, a collective unit but at the same time knowing that you know a lot of the runners and, and event uh, goers are just by themselves right right well uh, you know a lot of it's just familiarity with your teammates uh, you know this group uh uh, you know, on the male and the female side, they're they're pretty cognizant of what uh, they're all doing, and uh, you know, very supportive of each other. Uh, and uh, uh, it's it's difficult to get around. I mean, uh, you you do have the throws sometimes uh, far away from the track, and mm -hmm. you know that's vice versa. And, uh, 
Uh, so uh, it, it's it's nice to have some people go out there and cheer their teammates on. You know, some do that better than others. Uh, but uh, we, we we try to preach the idea of team. It, it's difficult. Uh, it really starts with your coaches. If your coaches are not buying into team, you're going to have problems on your team, yeah. uh, you know, with that team concept. And, uh, you know, that's absolutely crucial. And, uh, you know, some years you have that and some years, you know, you, you, you don't. Uh, I think this year we're blessed a little bit uh, on the athlete side where, uh, particularly on the women's side, we have some women who are running and throwing, you know, or, or right. you know, running and jumping or hurdles and something else. And, and so that actually, of course, mingles them with, with the other event groups, which, which always helps with that chemistry and team concept. It wouldn't be a uh, Bobcats unless we mention Robbie Romano. He uh, beat us previously, ranked 27th in the nation, 1,500-meter time. How does he just keep shaving that, that number down? Well, uh, he's doing it on his own a lot. Uh, you know, he's, he's working hard, training hard. You know, Coach Black has he's got some good workouts for those distance people. And uh, uh, Saturday, uh, Robbie actually ran probably about half that race by himself. Uh, fortunately, he had some – some good help there early on to, you know, set the tone a little bit. Uh, you know, it's always nice to not have to work four laps all by yourself. So mm-hmm. he had a little help there from some other people, uh, you know, and then he, then he finished it off, uh, you know, literally by himself. Uh, and, uh, you know, he'll continue to get better as the competition, you know, gets better. Uh, I'd anticipate this weekend coming up that uh, there'll be some people on the track there that will be, you know, pushing him, and, uh, you know, that would be very helpful for where he wants to go. John Kearns also had his season best in the weight throw while Michael Voucher uh, was runner-up in the hammer throw. Uh, do these guys uh, get the best out of one another through, through these competitions and these events? Uh, I, I think they do. Uh, you know, there's a you know, support system there. I, I think there's, you know, a little bit of competition between them, but more than anything, there's, uh, you know, a good support system uh, amongst those throwers there. Uh, I'll give you an example. John was uh, uh, finishing up his hammer at the same time that James Nails was finishing up, uh, you know, his his jab, and they were they were actually throwing uh, distance numbers at each other, uh, you know, pretty much saying, you know, hey, you know, you throw this, I'm going to throw that, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it was kind of neat to see, and and it's all in, in in you know good uh, good natured uh, encouraging each other uh, to uh, to keep getting better and stuff. So. Uh, and, and I think it worked a little bit. Uh, when it was all over, they compared notes. <laughs> the 4 by 100 meter team took home first, and how have the relay teams developed as the season's gone on? Well, we, uh, you know, relays are always a work in – most years, relays are a work in progress. You mm-hmm. know, you're, you're looking for the right combination. You're looking for the right, uh, you know, order, you know, sequence of, of your runners. Uh, you know, it's not always the, the fastest person anchoring. Uh, you're uh, in your four by one. You're looking for people and get the stick around. You know, sometimes your fastest runners uh, are, are maybe not even on the relay because they're not very good stick people. Uh, so those are all things that we've continued to work with. We've made some uh, adjustments here in the last two weeks. Uh, nothing set in stone. Uh, we still got a couple weeks before the conference. Uh, we would like to, you know, get that somewhat solidified so that we can. Uh, get those teams rolling together before we get to to the conference meet. But even the conference meet, you know, it's a long meet. Uh, Mm -hmm. Things can happen. You hope they don't happen, but things can happen. So it's always, you know, one of the things we always preach is uh, all hands on deck and, uh, you know, be ready to to help out if necessary. Uh, How do you get the relay teams to reach their peaks? I guess my question is, is that that through practice? Is that tinkering with what's going on? And and how do you balance that chemistry as well? Well, your four by one, definitely, they have to be working at it because it's, it's, you know, far more of a timing thing than the the four by four. But we'll practice handoffs in the four by four too because we don't, we don't want that stick slowing down, you yeah. know. And you, you know, we a couple of years ago we we had a, a a men's four by one team that was really close to making nationals, and you know we didn't have a single guy that could break eleven and hundred meters, and and yet we you know we came really close to getting the nationals. Mm-hmm. And it just shows you if you get the right guys who are competitive, and working together with each other, uh, you know that stick can fly around the the, the track. Uh, we're not there yet, you know, this year because we've been mixing some of our combinations up. Uh, but we think that, uh, you know, that four by one can, 
uh, definitely knock some more time off. And uh, the four by four is, uh, you know, we've got a, a whole bunch of people that we can we can put in there. So uh, who runs that at the conference meet may very well depend upon, uh, you know, how we line people up in the the individual events. Moving to the women's side, Holly Van, we reset the hammer throw record at Messiah. Has this been her strongest year uh, at Frostburg State, in your opinion? Uh, in, in the hammer, certainly, yes. Uh, Saturday, one of the positive things was, uh, you know, she she got up over 10 meters there in the shot put, uh, you know, so uh, – and, and she had a, you know, pretty solid day in the discus. So, Saturday was, was probably her best all-around meet, you know, so far this this, this season. And, uh, you know, the the hammer is, is something that she just continues to get better and better at. And, and uh you know, once you reach a certain level, uh, you know, you start to take off in some of these drone events. And, you know, Holly's reaching that point there in the, in the hammer. First year, Amy Tremblay finished fifth in the pole vault. Uh, how has she performed this season thus far? Well, she's a, a, a transfer in second semester that I, I hunted down. Uh, and and uh, Holly Van Wee went to high school with her. So between the two of us, uh, we convinced her to come out for the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and she's a hard worker and certainly shows athletic ability and uh, has done very, very well, you know, in, in uh, uh, both the pole vault and the, uh, the high jump. And considering that she's, uh, you know, been out of the sport uh, for about two years while she was at uh, another uh, community college there, uh, you know, who knows, the sky's the limit for her. You know, I, I think she uh, can uh, continue to improve and that'll really – help the women's team out because then we we've got some more strength in another event area this saturday you head to gettysburg to compete in the mason dixon invitational uh what do you expect to see from the teams in there it's not too too far away which is good no uh you know one of our closer travels we we like that <laughs> uh I, I think the meet will be pretty competitive uh maybe a little bit more competitive than some other years which is which is good uh We'll see some, you know, we've been starting to see some CAC schools, uh, you know, last week and, and again this coming week. Uh, and so that's good, you know, because then you start to, you know, assess your competition and a little better idea of, of, of maybe what you need to do to uh, to be competitive at that conference. So uh, Gettysburg's got a pretty solid team. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I really do anticipate that some of the areas where we have some strengths this year, uh, we'll see some strength in competition. So I'm looking forward to Saturday because I think, you know, on paper it looks like uh, we've got some people that can really push us, and that should make everybody perform better. Coach Dale Louie, thanks for joining us on today's Bobcast here on the Bobcat Sports Network. Thank you very much. Back here on the Bobcast, Fielder Dennis with Coach Bill Vasco. Coach, a tough week for the team going 0-4. Uh, looking at the Hood matchup, what do you think was the difference in the two games? Um, you know, both games, we jumped out to a lead. The first game, you know, we had some opportunities in the first inning that we didn't capitalize on and just scored one run. And that was a little bit disappointing and deflating. Um, we were never, ever really able to string anything together rest of the game. And, you know, in the second game, we jump out to a big lead and we've talked about all year long when we get big leads, it seems like we kind of go into cruise control and then it kept getting a little bit closer and, got to the end and we weren't able to close the deal so you know I, I didn't like our energy overall that day it was a midweek non-conference game and it you know just just didn't feel you know in all phases of the game they we were totally into it so it was disappointing to go in and not be able to get a couple of wins against the team that we thought we we could and you know we had our opportunities and just didn't finish it off and you know, we bounced back well in the second game and got a big lead and didn't close it out. And I know that was really frustrating for everybody to, to not be able to finish that off. Moving this past weekend, a conference matchup with the Mary Washington. Game one was a back-and-forth affair until a beginning decided its fate and then going toe-to-toe with a team uh, with only one loss in conference. Uh, what does that do for, for the team's confidence-wise? Uh, um, you know, I th- thought, you know, I told – our players that, you know, I thought we played really well on the day. We had the one bad ending in the first game on defensively where, you know, we just didn't do the things we needed to to make some plays to get out of the inning. Um, and, you know, we had some other opportunities to score. 
uh, that we didn't take advantage of, especially towards the game. So, you know, that just felt like a, a tough loss just because of one bad inning defensively that we just couldn't get it done. And then, you know, in the second game, I thought we played well overall and just, just didn't score any runs and give our pitcher any backup. And, you know, it, it's – frustrating to come out and not be able to get two wins on on senior day and especially when I thought we played really well except for that one one inning um you know it's you know like you said it was a, a tough week to go 0 and 4 and to be right there to compete against one of the teams that's doing really well in the conference you know it it's frustrating for everybody and you know sometimes those are the breaks in the game and you know we have to be, be able to find a way to bounce back and get right back into it uh um, get back on track in conference. And Mary Washington wasn't a team that really jumped off the page in terms statistically uh, in any one category. They just they, they did well in the circle, played good defense, and, and got timely hitting. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, and I think, you know, looking at their stats and watching them a little bit on video coming into the games, that you know, that's kind of what we expected as well. Nothing really flash or anything, but they've been consistent in all phases of the game. And, you know, played a lot of close games and come out on top of those close games. And, you know, it was kind of the same situation on Saturday, two close games. And once again, they came out on top and we just didn't need to, we didn't do the things that we needed to, to, to put ourselves in a better position to win. In game two, you got some quality pitching from Taylor McCarty, uh, but you couldn't, didn't necessarily get the offense or run support that y that you needed. Uh, you know, game one, you get five runs. Game two, you, you fail to score. And what do you think the difference was? Is it just a, a different pitcher in the circle? Yeah, I, I thought their pitcher did a good job of keeping us off balance and, you know, not really um, giving us any opportunities where, you know, when we had runners on base that we weren't able to capitalize. Um, you know, and, and Taylor matched her, I thought, really well. She gave up a couple of hits when they had runners on. I mean, they did what they needed to to get a couple across. But, you know, I thought that was Taylor's best performance of the year in terms of hitting her spots consistently and, you know, really shutting them down to the point, I, th I think, would they have five hits? Um, and, you know, but they had a couple of timely hits. But I thought she went out there and did a great job to come in and do what we needed her to do. And it's just too – I feel bad for her that uh, we weren't able to give any run support at all to give us an opportunity to win that game um, after the way that she performed. Olivia Ford celebrated senior day and broke a school record for single season stolen bases uh, with 23 on 23 attempts uh, this season. In your time here, though it's been uh, short your first season here, how has she impacted the program and your overall thoughts of her as a player? Um, she's done a really great job in terms of, you know, what we've asked her to do in the leadoff spot to get on base. And then, you know, she's had the green light all year in terms of, you know, when she feels she has a good opportunity to steal a base. And, you know, she's done that on a consistent basis. Um, you know, and she's been solid in the field defensively. So, you know, in terms of what we needed her to do this year, she's done everything that we've asked her to do. And, you know, I told her in the fall that I felt like, you know, she would have a really good opportunity to break the single season record based upon her speed. And, you know, if she could get on base consistently um, more than what she did, you know, last year. And she's been able to do that. And she's taken advantage of every opportunity when she's gotten on base to make sure that she gets good jumps um, and good reads off of the pitcher. And, you know, I, I think that will continue. She'll continue to add to that tally to, you know, increase the lead on the, the record as well. So I uh, appreciate every this, everything that she's done this year, especially as the lone senior on the team. Originally scheduled the Salisbury game for this past weekend. It was bumped to today. Then today was bumped again. Um, w in that matchup, the upcoming, you know, CAC tournament, and, and I guess this will lump into the next question with York and Penn State Harrisburg this weekend. You know, what what's the mindset going into these last few conference games knowing that the tournament's right around the corner um just to continue to work to you know try to solidify what we can do in terms of you know um, defensively getting the plays that we need to do to finish off innings and you know continue to work you know I, f I feel like our strength has been hitting and, and base running this year um you know just to make sure that in close games and I you know I feel like all of these conference games are going to be close giving ourselves opportunities where we can push across runs when we need to um in, in tough situations, especially later in games, you know, like I said, we haven't had any issues scoring runs early in games. It's been towards the, lo the latter part of the games, you know, when things aren't going our way, being able to bounce back and figuring out a way to do that, uh, um, you know, I think is what's going to be key. And, you know, right now it's the, the hard part is with the weather the way it's supposed to be this week, it's trying to figure out, you know, how can we get in the practice time that we need to, especially when we're not exactly sure when we're going to be able to play to get these games in. So it's kind of a little bit of a waiting game and, you know, just try to do what we can to 
um, continue to work to get a little bit better to give ourselves an opportunity to get as high as we can in the conference standings heading into the tournament. Coach Bill Vasco, thank you for the time and good luck this week. All right, thank you. Today's Bobcast brought to you by the Bobcat Sports Network and FrostburgSports.com, your number one source for all things Frostburg State Athletics. My name is Fielder Dennis alongside Coach Def Jeff Splinter, and we are discussing tennis. And Coach, we'll jump right into it this past week. Uh, what was your overall thoughts on the team's performances? Yeah, so we played Penn State Harrisburg this past weekend um, at Penn State. Uh, and it was, it was a great day. Probably the best day we've had all year in terms of playing. So it was nice to get out there in the sun. Uh, and the heat definitely got to us, I think, mm. in the later stages because it was a four-and-a-half-hour match. Uh, really, really competitive throughout the whole thing. Uh, doubles, if we start on the, the men's side, doubles, second doubles took care of business really quickly. 8-2 win, didn't struggle whatsoever. Uh, one doubles and three doubles kind of got off to a really slow start. Uh, really impressed with our tenacity. Um, three doubles was down 7-2, and it started getting really close. You know, you could see the other team really tightening up. We ended up coming back, making it 7-6, but then ultimately they won the last game 8-6. But uh, one heck of a fight. Uh, it, was a, it was a dog fight from start to finish for the men's side. Um, it was a 5-4 5-4 loss. You hate to see it. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, didn't come out our way on Saturday. Uh, really Really key standouts from a lot of the guys. Everyone playing some of their best tennis. And uh, Justin Davis ended up playing the same guy that he played last year, um, and he went three sets with really close back and forth battle. Same thing this year, a six four five five seven loss. Um, just him and that other guy, just really consistent. Not a lot of misses going on in that court. Um, they were just hitting back and forth the entire day. Um, yeah, then a real standout performance from uh, from Jeff and Toheeb down at five and six singles. I thought the bottom of our lineup was going to be strong against Penn State Harrisburg because we do have a lot of really good depth. And um, I think those guys came out ready to play. Penn State had four courts for each each court, so those guys had to sit okay. right after doubles, and you know they didn't they didn't really uh, take it easy. They were they were staying warm. They were staying loose. They're you know, getting ready, they're supporting their teammates, mm -hmm. and then when it was their time to get on the court. They just took care of business right away, and it was, it was fun. Um, yeah, on the women's side, see we have a, a really dominating doubles performance. We were, we were without one of our key players for doubles, so we kind of had to switch things up. Um, and our number two doubles team played number one, and then had some people switch around from there, but. Uh, Sammy and Shea played outstanding doubles against their number one team, who, who was pretty decent, and um, you know they really fought hard through the end. They had a, they were tied six six, ended up losing the last couple of games there, but um, it's definitely something you'd love to see your number two team competing head to head with their number one. You know, had we been 100% healthy, you know, we would have loved to have seen everyone compete at their natural positions, but on. From below there in doubles, everyone else took care of business. Jenna teamed up with Sophia at second doubles and absolutely creamed it at second doubles. Our second doubles performance this weekend was uh, outstanding from both the men and the women's side. And the three doubles, uh, Sharice and Erica played together. Erica doesn't really get too much doubles experience, so mm -hmm. for her to step in and you know really compete at a high level was was huge for us, um, considering she doesn't she plays singles but not really doubles this year, so. It was good just for for her confidence and you know to boost up Sharice, who was kind of feeling it a little bit from the uh, stomach bug going around Frostburg here. Um, yeah, and singles, uh, Jenna had a really really tough loss at one one singles. Um, started out a little slow in that first set, ended up losing seven five, but took control, dominated the second set six one, and then the girl for the third set, the girl she played really found another another gear and yeah. just played outstanding. Um, it was incredible tennis. Jenna was, was steady the whole entire day and the girl just really took it through that third set, unfortunately. But, uh, and from there, Sammy played a really, really close second set at second singles. Um, you know, stepping back in playing, it's her first singles match since, uh, Mary Washington. So it's been about two or three weeks since she's played singles with, uh, a hurt shoulder, wanted to give it a shot for the team and really compete. 
uh, knowing that Penn State Harrisburg is a close match. So kudos to her for uh, going out there and giving it a try, playing a little a little hurt, a little sore. Um, yeah, and then from there on, I thought, you know, we gave good efforts and singles. Unfortunately, came out a little slow, a little a little short. Um, and then Erica getting a win there at six singles was, was great. But tough 6-3 loss for the women. Coach, you know, it's always unfortunate to not being – be at full strength going into conference play and, and these matches, but do this, does this opportunity give you a chance to see, like you said, mixing up some teams and, and mixing up uh, uh, collaborations to see uh, what what exactly happens? Oh, absolutely. You know, we tell tell all of our players to be ready to play. Um, you know, whether you play one singles or you play seven singles, not really in the lineup. Mm -hmm. You know, you're one injury away, one one person not showing up away from mm -hmm. making sure you're playing. So we want to make sure everyone is always ready to play, giving their best effort. And, you know, everyone comes in with that energy and, you know, they're, they're not taking, you know, if they see one person sick, they want to play and, you know, prove that, you know, one, we're better than the other team we're playing. And two, mm -hmm. like they can compete with anybody, you know, they're, yeah. they got that mentality of it doesn't matter who it is. I'm just going to be ready to play. This week, you take on Bethany and another CAC opponent on the weekend in uh, York. Uh, Coach, what are you looking for to in these uh, matches this upcoming week? Yeah, Bethany, we're, uh, it's just a men's match, so we're looking forward to uh, playing out of conference. For yeah. one, it's been a while. Yeah. Um, all of our fall. matches have unfortunately been canceled yeah. with the impending weather here. But we do the best we can, and – you know, for, for Bethany, we're looking forward to continuing growing and, you know, is fine-tuning our play for Saturday. You know, we think York is a tough team, probably top five in the CAC conference, mm -hmm. um, and we want that challenge. We, we know we can compete with them, so we're looking to play our best tennis point after point, match after match, and continue our play from Penns to Harrisburg, you know, into Bethany, and hopefully – get some more confidence against Bethany uh, and play well to where we feel good about, about York on Saturday. Coach, thanks for joining us here on the Bobcat Sports Network. Good luck this week, and uh, here's to good weather this weekend. Hey, appreciate it. Thank you. Go Bobcats. <laughs>